Hey, what's up? Welcome to season two of The Reflection Show. I'm so excited that you're tuning in. Listen, before the show even begin, I want you to like, comment, and subscribe. Like, mm -hmm. comment, mm -hmm. and subscribe. Make sure you click that button below. There are some awesome stories this season two that I'm bringing to your living room, to your cell phone, to your iPad. Hey, might be even, it might even be your friend's phone, but I want you to like, comment, and subscribe and get ready to be impact, influenced, and inspired with these unscripted stories right here on The Reflection Show. I'm your host, Ramsey Rizard, and remember, your experience matters. Let's get into the show. Welcome to The Reflection Show. My name is Ramsey Rizard. You never go to the mirror scripted, you always go unscripted. And today I get to bring to you just a unique way of looking at fashion. Because most people don't know that with fashion comes with success. Your presentation is the key thing that can get you into doors that you probably didn't think that you were able to get to. But how you dress will show how your success is already operating in your mind. And to bring some amazing conversation to highlight this is a celebrity fashion designer, the one and only C.L. The Brand! What's up, man? Man, everything's increasing. Before I say anything, thank you so much for having me, bro. Yo, it's always a pleasure just to sit down with you. And I, I think my audience love you. First of all, you always dress fly. Right, your socks, your suits, everything is. When I'm wearing socks, I mean, when you're wearing socks, but even your ankles got lotion. <laughs> they better. <laughs> so you, you're, you're a celebrity fashion designer. How did you even get involved into this? Man, it's crazy. Overall, I spent uh, 10 years in corporate banking, and uh, I thought that was the path. I was so drawn to things uh, surrounding that area or space, if you will. And so I thought that meant I was supposed to go into that space. Mm. I like briefcases and pinstripe suits and mm. Mont Blanc ink pens and uh, white collars and all these sorts of things. And so I thought I was supposed to be in banking. And uh, so after the banking industry failed and the country recessed in 2008. And uh, so at that point, I was like, Lord, what am I supposed to do? And so just through a series of events, man, just realized and went back to my passions. I knew that I love playing drums and I knew that I love fashion. And uh, so with that, I chose to, to monetize, figure out how to monetize fashion. And we are today. It's amazing how one distraction led you to an attraction. Ooh. And it kind of pinpointed you on your destiny on what you needed to focus on to really hit on that thing that made you feel alive every day. Correct. Now you are doing this celebrity fashion designing and you're, you're doing custom tailor. What is that experience like for you? Man. Is that like a form of therapy? Oh, it's so amazing. My wife, bless her heart, sometimes she'll come out, uh, she'll notice I'm not in the bed and it's three in the morning and she'll come out and you know rubbing her eyes and come out into the living room area where my office, where the showroom is. And she'll see me just staring out of the window with a book of fabric in my hand. Uh, and she knows at that point, she's learned at this point in the relationship, that just means that I'm in my creative bag and just kind of thinking of combinations and uh, how to put things together, how something may look on a particular body style, so on and so forth. And uh, so it is therapy mm -hmm. <laughs> to, a, to a degree. And that's interesting because most people don't know to be successful as a creative, there's a unique time you wake up to develop what you see in your head. Yes. When there is silence and when there's no noise, yes. it almost gives your thought room to grow and to breathe. be able to breathe. Yes, dude. Uh, and that's, that's so key for me. Uh, it's also a challenge as well because my nights end somewhat late as well, two or three times a week. I say to every entrepreneur, uh, if you're spending five out of seven nights on your couch, you'll never do what you're trying to do. Wait, say that again. If you spend... If you spend five out of seven nights on your living room couch, you're never going to get to where you're trying to go. Because the, dis the, dis the misnomer, if you will, Ramsey, is, is that, that money is the currency. The truth of the matter is people are currency. I've gone into places where I had very little money and had great experiences because of my network. 
uh, and you hear this phrase, your network is your net worth. Uh, and a lot of that has to do with you getting out and doing what I call kissing hands or kissing babies and shaking hands. Shaking hands and kissing babies. That must be a Memphis thing. You gotta, it's uh, when I when I when I'm out and about, it's I make sure that I'm developing relationships. I eat at the same restaurants multiple times consecutively until they know who I am. And I've talked to the managers and the chefs and all these sorts of things. And there's so many different ways that entrepreneurs can develop a presence in their city and even micro it down even to their space. If you live in Altamont, run and become the mayor of Altamont. Right. Uh, and so yeah. you're pretty much saying maximize on your zip code. Absolutely. Maximize where you live because your success lives in that Absolute. area. Your pe the people around you are the currency. If you don't have relationships, you're pretty much broke regardless of what's in your bank account. That's true, because I always say relationship is currency. That's it's true. always been there, it's, it's continuously moving, and you don't see it. People that have, people that understand circle of influences understand that yeah. it takes relationship to see the influence yeah. that's in the circle, yes. you know? So let's talk about a little bit about fashion and success, because mm -hmm. most people don't believe that you don't really have to dress up to, to embrace success. Mm -hmm. For me, I believe to embrace success, you have to feel success. And to start your day is by looking good and dressing good. So help me help help me to help them who are watching to understand what you do and why it's so crucial. The first thing people need to know is that within the first seven seconds of meeting you, someone has already determined whether they would or would not do business with you. Wait, number one. <laughs> We're going to turn this because, of course, this is going to be a book that he's going to have, an e-book that's going to help you to be a better you. So, number one, you have seven seconds. The first seven seconds, a person has already determined whether or not they would or would not do business with you. Now, side note, you, it's still up to you as a professional to be credible, to present a quality product or service. Uh, to be priced competitively, all the other things that lead someone to a, bu a buying decision. But if all those things are right, whether I would or would not spend money with him or her is based on what I perceive in those first seven seconds. So perception will get you, depending on how it's set up, can get you a positive result. Absolutely. Absolutely. The thing is, I go into, uh, I'll tell you a quick story. I go into uh, a local real estate office. They're a global office, actually. They have a local office here. And I'm doing uh, consulting and branding, which I do a lot of. I probably do as much of that as I do dressing and styling uh, at this point in the game. But uh, so I'm in there speaking to the real estate agents there in this particular office. And the broker there, the principal, wants me to talk about branding and personally branding themselves beneath the banner of the corporate banner, if you will. And uh, I showed them uh, uh, two images. I said, one of these individuals just finished brokering or is about to broker a multi-million dollar real estate deal. One gentleman had on dress chinos, if you will, some dress sneakers, a dress button down and rolled up at the sleeve. The other guy had on a three-piece suit, had a Mont Blanc pen in his hand, and was sitting at a desk. And I asked all the people, I said, all the, uh, the agents there, I said, now which one of these do you think got or is about to get the multi-million dollar real estate deal? And of course, there were some, some, some smart ones in the room that say, well, it could have been either. Right. Could have been either. And the truth is, it could have been. So I asked question number two. Which one of these individuals do you believe that the client believes is better equipped to handle a multi-million dollar deal? That answer unequivocally is the person dressed up. The people spending the money make a judgment based on how the dress or how you look in terms of perception wow. when they walk into a room. They're not giving the deal to the guy in the button down and the chinos if the guy in the three-piece suit and the Mont Blanc pen is also in the running. So what do you think happens in the mind of the consumer when they're looking at the person or the person who's getting ready to service them? What do you think goes in their mind when they see that person is not at their best in their fashion? What are some of the things that you've heard from your clients that have stated some of these situations before? It's called perceived reality. Uh, the reality is what you perceive it to be. And the truth of the matter is, no matter how relaxed a particular geographic region is, and I believe we're more relaxed in Orlando and in the mid-central mid, mid uh, Central Florida region than in most, 
But no matter what that is, the perception, the overall perception of people in terms of neatness, precision, ability to handle problems, ability to react under pressure. Unfortunately, people reduce that all into a perception. Wow. It's plain and simple. Uh, in fact, if you Google successful real estate agent, Google successful attorney, Google successful any business, and click the button that says images and tell me what you find. I know you won't find somebody in the polo. <laughs> won't find them in a polo and some chinos, brother. It won't happen. Wow, you know, because most people don't really think that fashion is a big thing, you know? I mean, when you think of fashion, you think of New York, you think of right. L.A., right. And, mm, Atlanta, but more business-wise, you think of Washington, sure, D.C., sure, sure, sure. you know? And, 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 and people don't realize the importance of your assignment as a celebrity fashion designer. Sure. What, are, what are some key things that you believe makes you feel good every day when you dress up? Well, um, one of the things, and to answer your question, one of the things has nothing to do with your dress. One of the things, we are from a very young age, from infancy, we are actually taught because we're rewarded for accomplishing skills, for accomplishing talents, for accomplishing uh, tasks, if you will. So your mind is still triggered to get a reward or to release endorphins, which are positive internal mechanisms when we accomplish things. Hmm. So one of the first things I do, regardless, when I get up in the morning, I go and brush my teeth. That's accomplishing a task. That's also releasing fluoride and other things within the mouth that orally activate my brain and says, hey, there's no more sleep. Hmm. One of the other things I do right away, I make sure I make my bed. I just completed a task. It has nothing to do with getting dressed. I just completed a task. And so now I'm 2-0 and oh, right out of the gate. And then you run into your closet, and now you're in the, you're in the fourth quarter getting ready to finish this thing <laughs> and telling yourself that this game is yours. You're going to win today you're because you're, you're, you're prepared for it. Yes. You smell good. Yes. You look good. And then you're walking out that house sharp as ever, <laughs> making yeah. good yeah. as a statement to the world right. that you are in the building. That's right. And what you put on, and people need to understand this, Ramsey, is what you put on in the morning starts the night before. I don't mean in terms of preparation and making sure it's pressed and all those things. Yes. But even before any of that takes place, what you wear tomorrow should be based on what you have to do tomorrow. That's good because how do you expect to gain success for tomorrow if you lack the preparation of preparing success from yesterday? Correct. So the first thing I do in terms of getting dressed in a particular day happens 12 hours before when I open up my calendar and see what I've got on the books tomorrow. Wow. Because I'm going to see who's in front of me. I'm going to see the perception. Now, keep in mind, we said that people are going to inevitably make an assessment about your product or service based on what they see in this first seven seconds. So since we now are armed and equipped with that information, why not control what they see? So now, before I go to bed, I'm going to look at tomorrow's schedule. I see I have a meeting with this person, meeting with that person. What do I want to say to this person? The way I dress when I'm going to uh, talk with someone about potentially being an investor in my nonprofit is going to be totally different than I'm going to see a celebrity who wants to have something ready for next year's All-Star Game. That's true. You see what I mean? So what I'm wearing tomorrow is based on who I'm going to see and present to tomorrow. So you have to present your day of success or your future of success with a strategy. Absolutely. And without strategizing, you cannot fully maximize on accomplishing what that success looked like for your tomorrow. 100%. So quick question, as we get ready to end this show, there was someone on the other side of that mirror, CL, mm -hmm. and they're saying, you know, I never saw the value of, 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 of fashion. I never saw the value of preparing myself for the day. Mm -hmm. What could you say to that CL on the other side of that mirror? What words of reflection could you share with them looking at that mirror right there? Mm -hmm. The first thing I would say is probably the most critical thing is that you matter. Like what you, what you feel and how you feel, how you portray and how you present yourself to the outside world, to everyone outside of the home that you're about to leave in the morning for the day, to everyone outside of that house, you matter. The Father put you on this earth to affect a sphere of influence. And everybody you're supposed to affect, God has already carved your path to run in direct contact with their path. And so your only job is not to necessarily even have to seek them out or have to find them, 
But your job is to be ready when that time comes. So take an inventory on who you are, what drives you, what you're passionate about, what you love, what the father put you on this earth to do and to be and dress according to that and nothing else. And I guarantee you more than likely you'll win. Dress according to the best version of yourself. You're here to hear on The Reflection Show with CL the brand, a celebrity fashion designer. There is greatness within you. Don't forget, we always say you are the dream that is living. And remember, your experience matters. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. You enjoyed that interview, didn't you? Well, don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, share, and click on that notification. And remember, your experience matters.